Hello, hello. As the Roman Empire goes down in history and the Byzantine era dawns, the vast forest settles down around your city and brings you closer to the Maya Empire, the third allied culture in Rise of Cultures. The smell of a damp jungle is all in the air and you are settling down to build a prosperous tribe for a fat cocoa beans production and fulfilling the needs of the latest research in your city. This video belongs to the Maya Empire series on my channel, in which you can find even more content for this culture. Except for this video, focused on the basics of the Maya Empire, you can also find here video with tips on how to maximize your productions with ritual sites, video with tips for ideal city layout after unlocking the first buildings of the Age of the Franks era, and finally, video focused on the final stages of the Maya Empire, including quests all the necessary upgrades that you must complete in order to proceed further in the research and some of my subjective feelings and impressions from this culture. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to get notified whenever these videos are live. As soon as you unlock the Maya Empire in the beginning of Byzantine era, you start with a 3 by 3 expansions area in the middle of nowhere, seemingly surrounded by a never-ending jungle. The first and the main resource is the cocoa bean, which you can produce in the city hall and homes, similarly to coins in capital city or Deban in Egypt culture. There are two types of homes in Maya Empire, which comes as the first twist compared to the previous allied cultures. There is a worker home and the priest home, each accommodating its own type of people, the workers and the priests respectively. Workers are responsible for all the construction and production process in your settlement, while priests, known as spiritual masters and seekers of the Maya's wisdom, are closely connected with the ritual sites, the cultural buildings of the Maya Empire. In your capital city, as well as in Egypt culture, there are static cultural buildings that you place down in your city and they permanently provide a static cultural boost for the buildings placed around, the difference of the ritual sites is that, by default, they only provide a small cultural boost but need to have priests assigned, so that they hold a ritual for a limited time. This buffs the production and increases the cultural boost even several times, creating a massive difference in the happiness of the surrounding buildings. As you progress in the Maya Empire, this will soon turn out as a necessary requirement. As for my experience, I remember myself coming from the China culture, where no cultural system existed at all and I did not really bother with ritual sites very much, I placed them into my city and didn't focus on assigning my available priests, which soon caught me up by having a huge lack of almost all needed resources to progress. And that was the lack by all accounts and measures. Soon, this had a huge impact on the delay of my Byzantine era progression, which caused me finishing it after the Age of the Franks was released. So the bottom line here is that the ritual sites is not a cosmetic addition to Maya Empire, but it's a necessary requirement which significantly contributes to your success with the culture. I will create more content about ritual sites, including my own way of using this and calculating how beneficial are different productions in various production buildings in the separate video. Now, let's talk about the production system of Maya Empire. The production system starts with cocoa beans coming from your homes, both worker homes and priest homes, which is needed for producing jade in jade quarries and obsidian in the obsidian quarries. One of the first differences that I personally spotted compared to the previous allied cultures is that all numbers are a bit better calculated this time and it's not so easy to get into surplus of these resources as quickly as it was possible in Egypt or China. Therefore, it's very important to kick off this production as soon as it becomes available to you, otherwise you will soon find yourself in lacking the necessary sources for upgrading your capital city buildings, which is where the final resources of Maya Empire are required the most. For this you need the Mask Sculptor Workshop for producing Ancestor Masks, and the Chronicler Workshop for producing... Um, it's supposed to be a calendar stone, but... Uh, pardon me, I always get a taste for it. I will be back in a second.
<laughs> now it's much better. Alright, now let's summarize the production system in the Maya Empire. You start with cocoa beans coming from your worker homes and priest homes. These are required for the production of jade and obsidian in jade and obsidian quarries and these secondary resources are turned into final resources which is the ancestor masks and or I mean calendar stones produced in workshops while still supported by the continuous production of cocoa in your city. The final resources are required in just two very few technologies in the research of the Byzantine era which is kinda surprising after previous cultures but are mostly required for the upgrades in your capital city. Reaching very high numbers in the final stages I remember spending over maybe 50,000 of both resources before successfully moving to the Age of the Franks era and having the whole questline completed. Now let's move on to the Age of the Franks era. Once you finish the Byzantine era and successfully find your path to Age of the Franks, the Maya Empire introduces brand new production buildings such as aviary for producing feathers as the third secondary resource next to jade and obsidian and the brand new workshops such as Ceremony Outfitter for producing final resource headdresses and Ritual Carver for producing the last final resource called Daggers. Here comes my recommendation for your beginning of the Age of the Franks era. The production chain that includes aviaries is extremely demanding for cocoa beans. The amount of cocoa beans you need for one production in aviary almost triples the cost required in jade and obsidian quarries so the key is to have as many homes in your settlement upgraded as high as possible for maximizing your cocoa beans production. If you always keep the number of houses and their respective levels close to what the research makes currently available to you, you will be able to have most productions running at the same time, meaning running productions in aviaries, all quarries and possibly even some of the workshops. I did not find it possible to have the production running in all buildings, I guess that's what the premium buildings are needed for, but if you maximize your production of primary good, you will be able to have enough productions running simultaneously for a smooth progress in your research. Finally, let's conclude the production system of the Age of the Franks era with a descriptive visualization. We have the cocoa beans production coming from worker homes and priest homes, these are required in aviaries to produce feathers and still required in quarries to produce jade and obsidian. And finally, the feathers are required in ceremony outfitter workshop to produce headdresses and jade and obsidian are further required to produce ritual daggers in the ritual carver workshop. This concludes the basics of the Maya Empire in the Byzantine and Age of the Franks era. There will be more content about this culture covering ritual sites, layouts, quests and my own impressions from this culture, so make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss any future video. I will be more than happy if you leave a comment in the comment section below with your opinion about this culture and as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and I will see you in the next one.